Hey there. Welcome back to another 5-Minute Book Review. I'm John Hartness, your host. I am the founder and publisher of Falstaff Books. I'm a science fiction and fantasy writer, editor, publisher, podcaster, YouTube nerd, guy who sits too close to a really bright window so he has to have a ring light attached to his computer to even come close to making him not look like an old VH1 behind the music video. Yeah, that's who I am. And every week I bring you a short-ish book review video on something that I've read. This is to help keep me accountable. My goal is to read 52 books in 52 weeks. There's my cat. This is Puck. He's a little grumpy with me this week because he had some oral surgery. Had to have a few teeth taken out. But he's such a pretty boy. Say hello to the people. That's hello in Puck. Um, or maybe it's, hey, this is all right. You can, you can pet me. So this week's Book of the Week is Neon Prey by John Sanford. This is the, uh, God, I can't remember if it's the 27th or 20th. This is the 29th book in, um, his, in John Sanford's Prey series, which stars police detective, game designer, fed, now federal marshal, Lucas Davenport. Lucas Davenport is basically a manhunter. He's the guy you call when you need to find somebody who does not want to be found. And in this book, he, just like in one of my earlier videos, Old Bones? In one of my earlier videos, it was a Preston and Child book that was a spinoff of their Pendergast series. Because this book is so far into the series, and it's been a while since I've read any Sanford, there are a lot of characters Bye, pal. that I didn't necessarily know, but I didn't need to. The characters were clear, and everything was explained well. This is a well-done, episodic ongoing series. You can pick up Neon Prey, having never read another Prey book by Sanford, and you will completely understand what's going on. If you have read them, some of the backstory will make sense, will make a little more sense. You'll get a little more in jokes, but I felt I didn't feel like I missed anything by having such a gap in my Sanford reading. And I remember reading the first probably five or seven of these books in quick succession. They're quick reads. Um, they follow the traditional thriller structure in that they're multiple point of view and they bounce back and forth and the chapters are... These chapters are longer than I'm accustomed to in thrillers, but their scene breaks are short. So he could have easily made a lot of very short Patterson-style chapters, but chose to weave multiple scenes into longer chapters. Both structures work very well. A really interesting thing structurally that this book does is it'll go through a sequence of events from the law enforcement point of view. And this is how it goes, this is what happens. Then when it switches point of view to the criminal's point of view, it backs up and see, shows the decisions that the bad guys make that lead up to the confrontations that we get throughout the book. There's a lot of action in the book. There are content warning for sexual assault. It's not graphic, but it's very clear that there are rapes being committed by the villains in this book, and you're 
pretty happy when people shoot some of those people. Yeah, spoiler, people get fucking shot in a John Sanford book. Practically everybody gets fucking shot in a John Sanford book. It's like somebody getting kicked in the balls in a Bubba the Monster Hunter book. It It's just going to happen. So be aware that that exists. Be aware that that's in there. I felt like this was, this is very much a guy book. There are very few female characters. They're not terribly well constructed. They kind of exist. But the book is about Davenport. And Davenport is a big, old, mid, upper Midwestern, got Minneapolis, St. Paul dude with a, I don't know, the viewpoints of a middle-aged and older white guy living in America. He's not racist, he's not terribly sexist, but he does have some chauvinistic tendencies, and in this book, the women in the book aren't hugely... They aren't huge. They they don't have a ton of agency, to put, use a more literary term. So that's one weakness to the book. I did enjoy the book. I finished it. It was exciting. It was a nice palate cleanser from some of the fantasy I've been reading. I like to do that every two or three books is to switch up into a non fantastical genre so that we ground so that I can just step back into it reality-ish. I don't know if the gun stuff is right. It was right enough for me. I'm not a gun guy. I don't know if the cop stuff was right. I have my doubts about all of the jurisdictional things that were done, but it worked well enough. The book was good. All of these prey books are good, and the earlier ones have more mystery to them and more a sense of a Criminal Minds episode. This one was more a chase novel than a figuring things out novel. So it's more for, if you're looking for higher energy, higher action, more pure escapism, where kind of think of it like a stereotypical John Wayne movie or a Dirty Harry movie. There's a tough guy, he gets his bad guy, he kicks his ass, and all is right with the world. It's not deep. We're not, we're not digging for the meaning of life here. The series has certainly had more soul-searching entries. Some of the earlier books where he meets his wife and their courtship and beginning of their relationship has a lot deeper stuff going on. This one, it's, it's hunting bad guys and shooting them in the head. Which kind of fits, because I've been playing a lot of Borderlands and Bo Borderlands 2 and 3 the last couple of weeks. So hunting things down and shooting them in the head is kind of how I spend my evenings now. Um, but yeah, so I recommend it. It was a good book. Um, I'm pretty sure that my recommendation is neither, is not going to move the needle on John Sanford's, uh, sales one way or the other, but it's not my favorite book in the series. For that, I think go back to some of the very early books, or there was a book that, that featured Virgil Flowers. And I listened to the audiobook on that one, and I really, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Also, a lot of the earlier books, Sanford added a playlist. Excuse me. <coughs> it's pollen, I swear. Um, he added a playlist because music was very key to the content of the book, and I enjoyed that. That was less of a thing here. So... 
while I rec recommend this, if you can pick it up for a few dollars, I got it for like three bucks on ebook. I think that was a promotional price because the next book is now up for pre-order. But if you can get it for a few bucks on ebook, give it a shot. Neon Prey by John Sadford. Um, might be the weakest entry of the books that I have reviewed so far this year, but still a four-star book. I still enjoyed it. And it's not going to get a reread, but practically nothing gets a reread from me anymore. There's just not time. There's so much product, and I'm producing so much stuff. I don't reread anything anymore. I miss those days. Until then, until when? Until next week. I will be back on Monday with another episode of The Writing Life, and on Wednesday with another Storytellers interview. And then on Friday, I'll be reviewing another book. So I will see you guys next week, and until then, take care of each other, okay? <laughs>